Hello and welcome to the GTC channel. This video is going to explain how to build your Garden Timber Company pond. In this section we're going to cover site conditions, kit contents, building a timber structure and installing a liner. For site conditions we recommend a flat level hard standing surface, smooth concrete for the best results. If the site is not flat, it will show when you fill your pond with water. You can install these ponds on grass if it is a good flat area, but bear in mind though, depending on which model you have purchased, you may need to fix anchor points to the ground. For best results, a smooth flat concrete pad is preferred. For kit contents, all of our products are curbside delivery on a pallet. Once you have received your delivery, Check the contents and read the instructions to familiarise yourself with all of the parts. OK, so first of all we're going to discuss which planks are which. There are four types of plank that we use to build the structure walls. The first one we'll be using is a bottom half plank. It has tongues on the top to take the next layer and a flat underside to go on the floor. The second plank that we'll be using is a standard plank. It has tongues on the top and grooves on the underside. The majority of your pack will contain these planks. Before you start your build, you need to obtain what we call knocking blocks. Usually they're untreated pieces of wood with grooves on and you hit the knocking block rather than the product. So as you can see, I've located the bottom half planks, laid them down with a flat surface on the floor and the tongues facing upwards. The next layer that we're going to use is a plank number two standard plank and this will form the first shape of the pond. So now I've established the shape of the pond. Continue building your pond using all the standard planks available. OK, so I've finished installing all of my standard planks now. The third plank that we use in the building of the pond walls is a top full plank. It has a flat top and grooves on the underside. Now I've installed my top full planks, I can finish off the pond walls by using the top half plank. This has a flat top and grooves on the underside. Now the model we've installed today is a one by one and a half metre pond, five boards high, and it wouldn't usually have one of these. This is what we call a vertical support plank. On the larger ponds, especially where the walls are quite long, you will find that these are included in the pack. What we're actually doing on this pond is we're going to include this just to demonstrate how to fix your vertical support planks to the wall. I'm only installing one of these planks, I'm going to measure the wall halfway down. This has already been cut to length. You will find that the vertical supports supplied with the larger ponds are slightly longer and you're going to have to trim them to size. So I'm just 
just using a spirit level now to make sure. Nice and plumb. I'm using screws which are normally provided if your pond does have vertical support planks. I'm going to fix a screw through every plank. So I've got one in the top. Check it's plumb again. I'm going to put one in the bottom. You may need to draw a vertical line. So where you've put your first screw in the wall, draw a vertical line downwards and that will give you a good position for your screws. Now I'm going to instruct you how to install the liner lock. Firstly, measure and cut the liner lock to length. So using a 3mm drill bit, pre-drill the liner lock. Approximately every 300mm. The only reason we're doing um, pilot holes with a drill is to prevent the screws from slipping when you insert them into the line a lot. They need to be flush with the top of the pond. Okay, installing the liner lock, I've cut these two long walls to length and now I'm going to do the, the uh, short wall. You can use a hacksaw or a handsaw, it really doesn't matter. Um, you can cut it at 90 degrees. You're not going to see any of the liner lock once the liner's in. The main thing when you're installing the liner lock is to make sure that the groove for the liner is perfectly lined up. Doesn't matter if you cut it a couple of millimetres short, the key thing is to line up that groove. If it's out of line you will struggle to get the liner in. Now we've installed our liner lock, it's flush with the top of the pond all the way around. The next thing to do is to hoover the inside of the pond to make sure there's no debris or sharp objects which could damage the liner. Hopefully you've read the instructions and stored the liner in a nice warm place because it just makes it so much easier to install the liner. So now we need to um, install the liner. Uh, the first thing to do is um, lay the felt supplied on the ground inside the pond. And this will protect your liner. Um, so you just literally cut it to shape and lay it on the floor. Okay, so I've laid the felt inside the pond. You need a sharp pair of scissors knives do not work with this felt it literally tears it so you need a sharp pair of scissors to cut the felt to shape just work your way around the perimeter of the pond and then you should be ready to install the liner so we've installed the liner lock and the felt we're now ready to install the liner 
Please note that the liner is made slightly smaller than the pond structure. This is because it stretches into place once it's filled with water and it makes it look like a crease free liner. This is what you want. For this stage really you should take your shoes off if you're going to get inside the pond. I'm going to work my way around the outside of the pond because it's a small product but if you are getting in the pond you need to be working in socks. The first stage is to open up the liner to the shape of the pond and make sure the, the corners of the floor line up with the corners in the walls. If you're doing an octagon this is very important otherwise you're going to have to unclip the liner and work your way again if it's twisted. So lift up the liner lock, the liner bead, beg your pardon hold it horizontally and start working your way around the pond paying particular attention to the corners as you push down or it fills with water it will lock itself in place Once we've installed the liner, you can secure the liner in place using a liner lock wedge. This really holds it firmly in place. Once this is, is installed, the liner is not going to come out. You can remove it manually by hand, of course, if you ever needed to take the liner out. But we work our way around the perimeter of the pond um, using our thumbs, pressing it into the top of the liner lock. I'm going to show you how we do this. Start in a corner. Push it in nice and tight with your fingers. Okay, I've worked my way along one wall. Trick to get around a right angle with this liner lock wedge is to hold it in line, make sure you're well away from the liner and cut a small snip in the back of the liner lock wedge and this enables you to turn it 90 degrees. Little trick there from me. Now the liner's fully installed we're going to move on to the last stage of the build, installing the top shelving. Now we recommend you take your time to ensure you have an even overhang all the way around the pond. This is probably the longest stage of the build, so take your time, get it right, get it to look good. Depending on what model you've purchased, you may have electrical slots cut in the underside of the top shelving. Work out the positions you want these and also pay attention when putting the screws through. You do not want to trap any cables, so make sure you're aware of the positions and you stay away from them with screws. To fix the top shelving down we use self-drilling, self-countersinking screws. Work your way around the pond ensuring that you don't damage the liner as you do so. Now we've installed our top shelving, the pond's finished. All we need to do now is fill it up with the hose. 